Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a newly approved Alzheimer's disease drug called Aducanumab. This has been 18 years since the FDA, that is the Food and Drug Administration of the USA, has approved any drug for Alzheimer's. So far there have been only 5 known approved drugs that actually have been approved by FDA and the last approval, as I said, was in 2003. Now this drug has been approved and as soon as it has been approved, it has landed itself into controversy. So what is that controversy and how it can be resolved? Let's talk about it today. Alzheimer's disease is a severe dementia which occurs during the later age. It is named after a German psychiatrist, Alois Alzheimer. There are a number of symptoms associated with this disease, primarily related to memory as well as cognitive functions. The memory symptoms include people repeating statements and questions over and over, so loss of memory, forgetting conversations, appointments, events. They even don't remember the names of the people. They get lost in familiar places, the, for example, home or surrounding environments. Routinely misplaced possessions, often putting them in illogical locations. They could be car keys or just regular family possessions, home possessions. Have trouble finding the right words. So these are cognitive defects that happen during old age. Thinking and reasoning symptoms. So Alzheimer's disease causes difficulty concentrating and thinking especially about abstract concepts such as numbers. So these are you know, jobs which are more high level logical thinking based. So those are impaired in this disease. And also it also leads to changes in personality and behavior. The patients may experience depression, apathy, social withdrawal, mood swings, you know, sudden anger or sudden sadness and distrust in others. And sometimes people even become paranoid. Recently in popular culture, there have been many depictions of people suffering from this disease. It is just sometimes even called just senile dementia. So for example, 2014 movie Still Alice where Julianne Moore played the role of a professor who is struggling with this disease or 2020's Oscar nominee The Father where Anthony Hopkins plays the role of a father, you know, who's getting old and having the symptoms of this disease. It's a classical depiction. So if you are more interested in, you know, honest portrayals of this disease, please have a look at these movies. But anyways, let's come to the science side of it. It affects a lot of people. And as the world population ages, more and more people are getting caught in this disease. So this is the global incidence of Alzheimer's disease. As you can see, the highest, you know, incidences are recorded in many of the developing countries and continents, for example, Europe, North America and Australia. But I think the overall severity of this, this disease is, I think, severely underestimated because many of the times the medical professionals are just not available and they just can't make the diagnosis for old patients having these symptoms. And as I said, there is a dearth and there is a severe lack of proper medication for this disease. So that adds up to the complications. Now here are two manifestations of the disease. One is the classical, what is known as amyloid beta plaques. These are found in the cortical region of the brain and these are formed by the entanglement and clumping of a special protein called the amyloid beta protein. And we will talk about it in more detail because that's what aducanumab targets. And here is a comparison of a healthy brain versus an Alzheimer's disease brain. As you can see here, there is severe shrinkage of the brain matter. So that is really, you know, tells you a lot about the loss of brain cells. And there is change in the size of the ventricles also. These are the cavities which flood the brain with the essential cerebrospinal fluid. So that is another clinical manifestation of the Alzheimer's disease. And there is a lot of reduction in the white matter as well as gray matter, but especially gray matter. And as you can see in this 
image here, there are a lot of areas, especially in the cortex, the most developed area of the brain. Uh, for example, frontal lobe cortex, which is involved in decision making, logical abstract thinking, pre-central and post-central gyri, cortex of parietal lobe, occipital lobe, so def deficits in vision. So all these uh, spots basically indicate amyloid beta plots accumulating in different regions of the brain. And that has led the hypothesis that these amyloid beta plaques are the cause of this disease. Another kind of competing hypothesis, and there are many competing hypotheses for development of Alzheimer's disease, is the presence of neurofibrillary tangles. These are special tangle, you know, coiled structures present in many nerve cells. And these are formed by a protein called the tau protein. Now, tau protein is believed to stabilize microtubules, and here it is. For example, in a healthy neuron, we have multiple microtubules, and tau molecules are su supposed to stabilize it. And it is hypothesized that as the tau protein gets phosphorylated during advancing age, it basically uh, breaks apart from the microtubules, leading to disintegration of microtubules, as well as formation of tangled clumps of tau. So, this is kind of called the tau pathy hypothesis. That this is the accumulation of these plaques of tau protein which are the cause of Alzheimer's disease. Here we can see the impaired default mode network. Now default mode network is impaired in patients with Alzheimer's disease. It is, it is not deactivated properly. In young subjects, it is deactivated very well when they are thinking and when they are, you know, performing cognitively heavy tasks or cognitively, you know, they are, these are very much heavily uh, focused on the cognition. So you have to think abstract, you have to think logically, so rationally and logically like numbers, for example. So they can deactivate the default mode network. Default mode network is the kind of the thinking activity. You can think of it as what you think when you are not thinking about anything. So for example, just mindless wandering or just lost in thought, for example. And people who have Alzheimer's disease, they can't deactivate the default mode network. And the deactivation of default mode network is actually very, very important if you want to think in terms of cognitively heavy tasks and you want to remember names, remember faces, remember where you put things, all these, you know, tasks which require attention, attention, uh, heavy tasks, these required deactivation of default mode network. And you can see in the study in using fMRI, the functional MRI experiments, that people who have Alzheimer's disease and have especially progressive Alzheimer's disease, they can't deactivate their default mode network. Now this is the proposed process for generation of these amyloid beta plaques. It is generated from a huge protein which is called the amyloid precursor protein, APP. Which is a transmembrane protein as you can see here and there are two enzymes one is called the beta secretase and another is called the gamma secretase the gamma secretase is present inside the membrane whereas beta secretase is present outside the membrane and the cleavage of amyloid precursor protein by beta secretase and the gamma secretase sequentially produces this amyloid beta protein which clumps into the you know amyloid beta plaques now, so far, as I said, there have been only five medicines approved for Alzheimer's and that is really scanty. And it has been a legend or kind of a common knowledge that most of the Alzheimer's drugs fail in phase two or phase three clinical trials. Here are some of the drugs. We have Tacrine, one of the first approved drugs back in 1993, Rivastigmine, Galantamine, and Donepizil. And all of these four drugs are acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but I will just write it so that it is decipherable to everybody. Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. 
and the fifth drug that has been approved is called Mimanti and it is an NMDA receptor antagonist. And as I said, the last drug which was approved was in 2003, that was Mimantine actually. So for 18 years, we have not had a credible, good, you know, working Alzheimer's drug. And these also, these drugs also provide minimal benefits. They don't really justify the costs as well as the side effects. And as you can see, you know, many drug candidates, they have been, you know, researched heavily by different pharmaceutical companies. For example, Eli Lilly, it's candidate drugs, Solanizumab, this is a report from a newspaper. It failed in the clinical trials. Merck, you know, you know basically dumped its very B C-STAT uh, drug. Here we have Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Bapinuzumab, all these drugs, they failed in clinical trials. And there have been many papers also, for example, you can take a look at this title, you know, Alzheimer's Disease Drug Development Pipeline, few candidates, frequent failures. So with the aging population and with the current epidemic of, you know, Alzheimer's disease currently, there are 6 million people affected in the US alone with Alzheimer's disease and globally there may be most likely like 20 or even 30 million people suffering from this disease and this disease puts a lot of burden on the family for caregiving so we need good therapies for alzheimer's disease which actually work so biogen one of the biggest biotechnology companies founded in 1978 now has this drug which has been approved by fda in an accelerated approval and we'll talk about that also and this is called aducanumab and it will be marketed as aduhelm, okay? Back in 2016, some early clinical trial data showed a very good reduction in amyloid beta plaques using aducanumab in clinical trials and that was very promising. This is one of the structural studies. Here you can see the antibody. So aducanumab, as you can see from our some of our previous videos that anything which ends with a MAB is a monoclonal antibody okay and here is the structure of aducanumab targeting the fragment of amyloid beta so it targets it in the monomeric form not in the multimer form so that is supposed to be in early stages of the development of alzheimer's disease so this is supposed to block progression to severe alzheimer's disease and the thing is, it has landed it itself into a lot of controversy because back in 2019, there were kind of conflicting results between the phase three clinical trials. There were two simultaneous clinical trials enrolling about 3,300 patients for these clinical trials. And another thing I wanted to mention is that the phase one trial results were so promising, according to Biogen, that they totally skipped the phase two trials, which is kind of not the right way to do things. But I think they really wanted to get this drug to the market or there were some other pressures. I am not saying anything about that. But anyways, they skipped the phase two trials. That is a fact. So in 2019, they uh, did this contemporaneous, you know, simultaneous trial. One was called Engage and one was called Emerge. And as you can see from the press release from Biogen itself, that because of the disappointing results, they had some problems and they did not know the proper dosage amount for the drugs and due to uh, basically a futility test, they said that, okay, this is not worth it. They stopped the trial midway, but because half of the trial, half of the two trials was complete. So they said, okay, it almost counts as one full trial, phase three trial. And they analyzed the data statistically, but in 2019, they shelved it basically. And in 2020, they some, somehow revived it again. And when they submitted the data for FDA approval, many of the people, they expressed their disagreement with the approval, especially uh, a statistical reviewer named Tristan Massey wrote in the FDA document. In summary, the totality of the data does not seem to support the efficacy of the high dose, right? There is only one positive study at best and a second study which directly conflicts with the previous study, with the positive study. So that is talking about the ENGAGE and the EMERGE trials. So ENGAGE was kind of positive in nature, so it, it worked as compared to a placebo and EMERGE was, uh, you know, did not work, did not 
uh, purportedly worked, it didn't have statistically significant results. Both studies were not fully completed as they were terminated early for futility, as I just said, right? Sporadic unblinding for dose management also. So because they skipped the phase two trials, they did not know the exact dosage. So they had to kind of change the course of the trial midway. So it was there was a lot of problems with the uh, trial. So that is why people were not very enthusiastic about it. And for this, for these reasons, the reviewer believes there is no compelling substantial evidence of treatment effect or disease slowing and that another study is needed to confirm or deny the positive and negative study. So they, they wanted more studies to be done to be absolutely sure. Sure, people need the drug for Alzheimer's disease. We are, we are desperate, patients are desperate, but we need an effective drug, not just you know, a hopeless cure. But anyhow, so as you can see from this Forbes article, there is controversial FDA approval. This just happened on 7th of June yesterday. And uh, as, as you can imagine, this will be a big money maker if approved. And now it has been approved in the accelerated approval. And it is a very, it comes with a very hefty price tag. The cost of this drug is huge. It's something like $56,000 per year. It is given by intravenous infusion monthly. So it roughly costs about four and a half dollars four and a half thousand dollars per month so that's the dose and in indian uh, context this is roughly 40 lakh rupees per year so this is not a cheap drug and you can imagine that with six million people affected with alzheimer's you know if one or two or two and a half million people get this drug with fifty six thousand dollars a year it will be a potential blockbuster for biogen so of course, there is money involved here. And doctors are already up in arms about this drug. They are already saying, you know, I won't prescribe it because they don't have the confidence in the drug trial data. And I want to mention it again that uh, it is an accelerated approval by FDA. So it is kind of a conditional approval because now they will have to go for a phase four trial which means that they have to enroll more patients in, and do further studies to see whether this drug really works or not. So do we have a drug for Alzheimer's disease now? We don't know. I think the time ahead will tell us whether we have got a credible treatment for Alzheimer's disease or not. I hope this is the drug because really people are suffering from this disease, disease a lot. So we really want a treatment, but just because we are desperate doesn't mean we should cling to everything even unproven drugs. So that was my discussion of Educanumab. If you have any doubts, comments or questions about this video, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.